Hello. Hi. Hi, George. I think we'll give it a couple minutes and uh, give folks time to uh, join. Lovely cat. I'm just happy he's only showing his face rather than his other side, which he likes to do. Would anyone like to be the host today? Do we have any volunteers? If not, I would be delighted to run the meeting if no one else is interested. Always happy to have new hosts. Okay. Um, is anybody? Uh, has anybody heard from Till? I have not. How about we move him a little bit later in the agenda, just in case he uh, is running just a little bit late. And I oh, will down towards the bottom. Okay. <laughs> uh, I believe so. I think Danielle was uh, informing Till, uh, though it's it's quite possible that uh, I completely messed up the date. If, in, in case anybody is missing the context, I uh, tweeted out last week uh, about the meeting a little bit uh, prematurely since we moved to a bi-weekly or 
per fortnight uh, schedule. Okay, well, we're past five minutes in, so why don't we get started? Um, hi, everyone. My name is David Justice. Uh, uh, this is the TAG Runtime uh, WASM Working Group meeting. Uh, we are CNCF. Uh, we abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct. Um, basically, uh, be awesome to each other, and let's uh, let's keep uh, a kind, empathetic, and uh, inclusive uh, communication here in this meeting. So we have a pretty full agenda. Um, I don't think we have any PSAs or any announcements. Um, but before we get into agenda, uh, if anybody has a PSA, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. Going once, twice, sold. OK. Um, we also have a bunch of new folks here. If anybody would be interested in introducing themselves, saying hello to the group, uh, please raise your hand, you'll be recognized. Ashutosh. Hi folks, hi David. Um, I missed the last meeting. Um, so this is my first WASM meeting. And I'm really kind of a noob here in the WASM, awesome, just trying to explore and learn things around. Um, so yeah, and I work at Elastic now. Just sometime back, I was in VMware. I joined this company like a couple of weeks back. And I've been also contributing to CAPZ and a little bit around six storage. So yeah, nice to meet you folks. Good to see you here. <laughs> Uh, Luke. Hey, everybody. Um, it's my first uh, runtime meeting to attend. I uh, work on WebAssembly standardization. Formerly worked at Mozilla and Firefox and adding WASM there, and now work at Fastly uh, on WASM there. And I've uh, been talking a lot to David and his team before, but first time to kind of get more involved on the CNCF side. I'm excited about this whole WASM and OCI thing uh, and want to see how that's going. Thanks. Thanks, Luke. Welcome. Uh, Daniel, uh, you, you couldn't find the raise the hand, but uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So I just joined the CNCF myself. Um, I spent 20 years at IBM. We use WebEx. So it's um, it's one of those things where I know where the raise hand button is in uh, WebEx, but on uh, Zoom here. Um, but great to meet you all. I'm just interested in um, kind of sitting in, listening uh, the latest uh, what you're working on. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised. Anybody else? Once, <clears throat> twice, sold. Okay, so let's move on to the agenda. We have uh, Rajas and Ashutosh uh, presenting a uh, K8 scheduler extension, and uh, we can't wait to hear about it. I'm super excited. Thank you all for uh, uh, offering to present as well. Uh, so the floor is yours. Thank you. Awesome. Um, how do we, like, we will need to share the screen. Uh, do we have the permissions? Uh, like, can you make me and Rajas both host? Like, we would be searching to share the screens. I can share this. I can see the share screen button. So if you don't mind, Ashutosh, I can start sharing the screen. But you may have. Awesome. The, can you also share the screen? Like, because you may have to do the demo as well. Okay, let's, uh, sorry folks for the logistics. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, can you see my screen? Yep. What is it? Is it like some Google, is it the, as in the doc? It is the doc. Got it, so yeah, makes sense. So Regis, you can start sharing your screen and then how do you want to do? E e you can we can switch like sure. you can start sharing it then okay so uh hopefully the screen is visible awesome um hello folks uh i'm ashutosh and i've already mentioned today that i work at elastic and i'm joined by rajas um he works at vmware i'll give him an opportunity to introduce himself 
but we are here to kind of share a little bit of learning that, are, uh, that we had while we were trying to explore Wasm Extender. So Wasm Extender is a cool way of integration between Wasm and Cube Scheduler. So it caught our eye. And we were also, you know, kind of interested in re relevant Wasm research groups. So we started to give it a thought and we intend to contribute onto this and make it more better. Uh, so right now it is like, it is just a very new project. Um, and I'll talk more about that. Um, so this is the agenda that we have right now. Uh, we want to like give a high level refresher of scheduler plugin. Um, you know, that if you want to have your own custom scheduler, how could you do that? Uh, and then second uh, is about Cube Scheduler Wasm extension, uh, which Rajas will cover and give us an idea of how Wasm extender works. And we'll try to do a little comparison between Wasm extension and then the regular way of extending the Cube Scheduler. Uh, I do have a little nice demo uh, the disclaimer is that I wanted to prepare for a more involved demo, but I couldn't do it, but yeah, it will prove the point at least, hopefully, and give, a, give us all of us some understanding on it. Um, so from here, I'd want to like, Rajas to take, uh, take over. Uh, Rajas, do you want to like speak about that uh, while yep. I can share the screen? Sounds good. Yeah, so a couple of disclaimer folks. Uh, we're not experts. Uh, we're just trying to get involved into the uh, Cube Scheduler Wasm extension project uh, and trying to contribute over there and uh, getting it, getting more involved in the Wasm community as well. Uh, and before we get started, shout outs to the maintainers of Cube Scheduler extension, Wasm extension project, Ken C and Grip for like, uh, bootstrapping this project and like really seeing it through and contributing to the project as well. Um, next slide, Ashdosh. cool. All right, so um, Cube, the way Cube Scheduler works today is it offers a pluggable scheduler framework wherein uh, custom plugins can also be written, uh, but that involves uh, compiling a custom scheduler with the plugins and generating an image out of it to, to be deployed in a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so the frame, the scheduler framework offers uh, plugin interfa interfaces and APIs that one can extend to write their own set of plugins. Uh, and at a very high level, how this works is uh, essentially you can think about like how a part can be scheduled onto a particular node. And then that involves like a scheduling cycle as well as a binding cycle wherein a particular node has to be uh, selected or filtered for the pod to be scheduled. And then it has to be basically running onto the node. Uh, so if at any point we need to uh, basically customize any of the plugins, they can be done by extending this framework. And uh, there are a couple of examples in this uh, scheduler plugin repository where these plugins are written out of tree from KK uh, or Kubernetes slash Kubernetes. And they uh, they do so by extending the scheduler framework that is offered over here. Uh, yeah, so these are like some of the plugins and how it looks like. Uh, so all of these are basically extending the framework. We can go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so these are the extension points that I was talking about. So Ashutosh, if you can open the, uh, the first link over here, that'd be great. Yeah, so this is the part scheduling cycle and the binding cycle. And at every point, there are uh, extension points like a pre-filter, filter, or a scoring mechanism on how the node has to be selected and then how it has to be like, bound to a particular uh, or or how the pod has to be bound to a particular node. And then any of these built, uh, extension points can be customized to be written into a separate plugin itself. Uh, and that plugin, again, requires building a custom scheduler. So that is, so that is the context that we wanted to set over here. Uh, if you can go back to the 
yeah, so a couple of examples and references over here that we can go through on how uh, how the plugins work, how they can be extended, what is the API and the interface exposed. Uh, and yeah, if you want to know more about Cube Scheduler, like these are a couple of references. Uh, next slide, please. Yep. So the problem at hand is mostly around how instead of uh, writing a custom scheduler every time with a lot of Golang code and things like that, can we write only custom plugins and bind them to Cube Scheduler at one time? That is what this project is trying to solve or that is the main goal over here is to provide a WASM extension for a, all of the plugins or any of the plugins and then bind them to Kubernetes Scheduler or Cube Scheduler at runtime. Uh, this offers like multiple benefits Many of them include like things like the plugins can be written in any other language than Golang as long as it supports a particular WASM runtime. Uh, currently, this project uses WAS0 as the WASM runtime, uh, which tries to build plugins uh, or build WASM binaries for plugins and then bind them to Cube Scheduler at runtime, which can then be tweaked around with a scheduler configuration. Uh, while doing so, currently, uh, the, the approach that is uh, taken over here is to get plugins from like the native cube scheduler into a WASM extension style, and then also evaluate the performance benefits or the performance benchmarks that we attain from a WASM extension as compared to a native KK uh, or, or a native plugin from coming from Golang. Uh, but, but yeah, that's this is like the main uh, the main problem that this project is trying to solve. Uh, from and and I think from now on, I think Ashutosh, you can take over on getting over with the uh, was an extension config and things like that. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so I'll I'll continue from here and you know also try to show a demo on what we just did sometime back. So this is basically a very minimal cube scheduler configuration. And what it is specifying is that, uh, you know, for a particular scheduler that is default scheduler that is being deployed as an image, for example, or, or as a container, uh, you know, use this plugin whose name is WASM. And so this WASM plugin is basically going to implement this filter extension point. So if you could see like filter, pre-filter score, those were the extension points that any plugin could implement. And, um, you know, it will become more clear when I saw the demo. So this is how you set the configuration for the cube scheduler. Um, so let, let's go into a demo right now. Um, so uh, before I go into jump right into the demo, I just want to walk you through what I have tried to do here. Uh, if you see in examples, there's this GPU folder. Uh, I was trying to make a more complex demo, but couldn't finish due to lack of time. So the intention here is that, you know, I'll create a Kubernetes cluster with, let's say, a couple of nodes. And some of those nodes will have a label known as static equals to true. And the idea behind putting this label is that these nodes are only meant to run static pods. And any regular pod that a user may create should not get scheduled to these nodes, these nodes which are labeled static. Um, so if you if you just look at this filter extension, this is where uh, this is a static uh, plugin, uh, just an empty structure which has implemented this filter extension point. So filter is a method in all of the interfaces and plugin API. And if you see this code, it just tries to fetch the labels, and if it says the label, if the node has label static, just make sure that you know it is not scalable. So basically, filter rejects this node for being able to steal. Um, and in this main.go, this is general structure of how do you register a plugin to the WASM, structure, uh, WASM extender framework here. Um, so uh, if you see at line number 37, I've just said that, you know, I want to set this plugin and this plugin is nothing but GPU plugin.static. Sorry for the wordings, wordings are a bit unfortunate, but yeah, uh, you get the idea. Um, and so this is what I wanted to show. And 
one more important thing that I wanted to show is a little hack that I did to get all of this running was here. So what happens is when the scheduler extender uh, uses Kubernetes slash Kubernetes actual scheduler. So it actually uh, has a Kubernetes repository as a sub module because it uses the code of actual scheduler also. Uh, so this is the path where the WASM binary should be present. I didn't really figure out a way on how do I can customize this uh, or put this path in configuration or something. So just to test my hypothesis, I just put this path as an hard coded thing here right now. So this scheduler that builds out, it will always look for a WASM binary at this location, which is this file. And this WASM file is nothing, but it is gonna contain all those filter plugin implementation that I just showed you. Uh, by the way, feel free to stop me, you know, meanwhile, uh, I'm speaking all of this. Um, and now this one, uh, is the hack that I wanted to tell. So let us just dive into the demo right now. Um, I have created the kind cluster uh, beforehand just to save some time. So if you see the nodes, um, if you see this kind worker, it, it doesn't has, it has just like a general equals true label and kind worker too, you know, if, if you see this one, this had state static equals to true node. So kind worker two and kind worker three are level static. And the idea is that the pass that we're gonna create shouldn't get scheduled onto this two nodes, but to kind worker node. And if we, let's say, just to prove this point, uh, because it may be random. If we taint this node, the kind worker node, the part that we're going to create should actually be in pending state because you know it didn't find any node. Um, so, so what I'll do is this is the directory where I had written my plugin. So I'm going to build this wasm binary by using this command that I've copied it here in doc.md so that I can just copy paste. Uh, I'll build this using Shining go. It just takes a little while. Uh, while this build, uh, you know, it is also worth to read the readme.md of this cube scheduler extender project uh, behind some decisions like why tiny go is being used and you know stuff like that. Um, so now I have a main.wasm file. And I'll just move this file to that particular location where I had just hard coded in the code. And if I go here, I have my main.wasm binary available. And I'm also going to build this scheduler right now. Um, also, I just wanted to show you one thing is that. In this kind cluster, there is no cube scheduler running. So what I did is I just removed the cube scheduler static manifest from ETC Kubernetes manifest so that this cube scheduler does not run. Because if, if I start my scheduler at my local machine and point to the same cube config, it will never be getting leader elected. So it will never actually run. And for that reason, I had to like disable this cube scheduler here. Um, and now I am going to start this main binary. So this main binary is actually the cube scheduler thing, which is running and you know it has that address of where to find the WASM binary, which is in the current directory right now. Uh, and before I run this, I also want to show, show you this config file. Um, so this is the cube scheduler config file that says use this cube config, which is pointing to my client cluster. The name of the scheduler is default scheduler. And can you please use WASM plugin? This is what it is trying to say. Please use the WASM plugin to extend the filter extension points. And this is the plugin config name. Um, so let us get started on starting this. Well, the cube scheduler is running. Uh, it's running on my local machine now, and I am going to create a pod. If you see, this is a simple pod, uh, and 
let's just create this part. And if you see this part actually got scheduled on kind worker node, uh, you know, just to give one more site to it. If you see this kind worker node is not a static equals to true labeled one node. So it, it makes sense. It should actually get scheduled to this node um, and not to the other two nodes, but it could be random also. So to validate that hypothesis, let us first delete this pod once again. And we don't have any pod and let us taint the node. I've already ran the taint commands, it should be there. So what I'm doing is I'm just tainting this node where the pod should ideally get scheduled and marking it as no schedule, right? And if I create the pod now, it is in pending state, right? And uh, let us describe this pod. And you see it says something like wasm plugging no matching for a node for plots. And I was really happy to see this message because I was not able to get end-to-end -end understanding of how I could actually do that. And one thing I observed was, uh, you know, if you see this code here, uh, when I, it got printed. So any print statement or anything that I was trying to put it here, it was not logged or whatever. And then I also try to, okay, maybe something with logging on standard output or something. So I just try to, you know, do fancy things. And I was like, doing a os.create let's create a file and something so it also failed though uh, you know that's for in the research why it was not working yeah, but yeah this is the idea uh, you know that i wanted to you know so and this is what we could have done we did you know in limited time that we got and the thing to realize here is it it is so easy to kind of have your tender kind of maintained in a separate repository. And then you have your cube scheduler wasm extender deployed as a default scheduler. And then you write your own plugins, which is a wasm binary, you know, and then just distribute that wasm binary to kind of, uh, you know, get your customized behavior for scheduling. Um, let us uh, go to the next slide and try to do a comparison of, uh, you know, why, what is the war moment here for this standard uh, extender scheduler? So in general, if you're trying to have your own custom scheduler by uh, scheduler framework, what essentially you have to do is you have to actually use the cube actual k slash k cube scheduler, and then also write your plugin. And that plugin has to be, you know, kind of compiled into that code, right? So when you produce an image out of it, the plugin itself is there. So let's say you want to make any change in your plugin and whatnot, right? So everything has to be built end to end. And then it comes with, uh, with you know, a little bit of work. So you, it means that you have to do all the deployment and configuration work over and over again, even when you're upgrading your Kubernetes cluster. With Wasm extension, it kind of tries to lower the tension a bit, though it's in early stages. Uh, but the idea is that, you know, it makes this, the Wasm extender, it tries to make the scheduler itself capable to you know, ingest the WASM files. So when you have this, uh, when you bring a scheduler out of this repo, this scheduler is capable of, capable of ingesting WASM binary and which is nothing but a plugin. And it all happens at runtime dynamically. Um, so eventually it removes this deployment work and it is language, language agnostic. It would have been really nice if I could have shown a demo in like writing a plugin in Python and something like that, but couldn't do that. Hopefully we'll do that in the next meeting. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's really it's really cool. You can write your own plugins in language of your choice, and it it just has a little separation of concerns. Uh, there are the performance trade offs that you know have been discussed on a couple of links on the repository, uh, but I'm not sure about like you know what are the benchmarks right now. Um, so you know something like this may come in near future, like the comparisons of how an actual custom scheduler compiling with the plugin behaves with behaves in performance with this one. Um, so yeah, that's it. This is what I wanted to show. And this is what we have been trying to do. And the next step for us is to kind of, uh, the first thing I want to do is do a quick start guide on this repo because it was very hard to kind of get started and realize the end to end workflow. And I and Rajas are working on that. And I would lurk around and ask questions around Wasm because we're new. 
to get help around this. So thank you very much and thank you, Rajas. Well done. <clears throat> thank you so much for sharing. Uh, do we have any questions? Come on, there's gotta be somebody out there that's wondering what's going on here. Ashutosh, you have your hand up? Um, yeah, I'd love to take questions, uh, but if at all, you know, I'd love to like chat also async on the Slack. I'm pretty active on CNCF or Kubernetes Slack, so I'd love to chat, learn around this. But yeah, pausing a bit here for questions. So uh, quick question. So the main takeaway is that uh, you know compiling a scheduler and running it internal in the cluster is uh, an impedance and you really just want to make it as easy as adding plugins dynamically. Is that the gist of it? Yeah, that's the gist of it. Because when, when you have to write a plugin in general using Steeler framework, so what you have to essentially do is like implement some of the interfaces. Um, if I'm talking in Go terms, and that need to be, you know, passed into the actual uh, Go constructor of Cube Scheduler. So that essentially, you're building all of this together, right? Um, so, for example, tomorrow, if you want to, let's say, change the behavior of your filter plugin, you want certain different strategies, you know, how you'd be rejecting some of the nodes, then you make that change in your plugin, but then you build it entirely with the Cube Scheduler code, right? And then you take an image out of it and then deploy that image on your Kubernetes cluster. Here, you build, you definitely build a new scheduler using scheduler framework, but this new scheduler has different capabilities. And the capability here is to kind of ingest your plugins using WASM binary. Now you're building your WASM binary separately, right? So this two goes like parallelly. So you could make some changes let's later in your WASM plugin, bring a binary out of it and distribute it to that path and say, okay, just let's go use this one. Sounds pretty compelling. Uh, very cool and interested to see where this goes. Uh, I think that it could open up uh, a lot of uh, open up scheduler customization to a lot more people. Uh, that's very cool. Thank you. Uh, raise hands if you'd like to be uh, recognized for a question. If not, uh, Luke, please. Seems like a really great use of WASM as like a plugin. It's like a great pattern. I've I've also seen some other uses of WASM as plugins in a Kubernetes context, like admission controllers and maybe OPA. How many? I was curious. How many plugin different cases of plugins have we seen across Kubernetes? And do you think there's like a like a pattern here, like WASM as plugins into you know all these different parts of this you know large system and uh, I don't know, do you, do you imagine any sort of convergence on how do we do plugins in, in Kubernetes uh, happening over time? Just kind of just open it a question for discussion. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, I do know much like uh, apart from this. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it, it's really cool, you know, things coming up like this way. Uh, and when you said about like OPA and admission control being used. So now it's like, okay, this is a homework for me now. <laughs> Actually take a look at what's going on there. But yeah, you know, if anybody else know, like what are the other areas where this been used? Like, I don't know. I think that's actually an open question. And uh, I would love to see, uh, and I think that's part of what this group is about is figuring out, uh, raising awareness and then figuring out where the pieces fit together and then you know, how do we, how do we align these? Uh, is there, is there commonality? Can we, uh, is there something that we can find in common and uh, make this easier? <laughs> yeah, uh, like, like what's probably different in each of these cases is what are the particular like life cycle events and what are their signatures, right? So that, you know, what, when do I get called and, and when I'm running, what do I have access to? You know, like when I'm, certain modes, you know, I can probably make out going HTTP requests and other ones, definitely not. 
um, that sort of thing. So if you're like, what would describe the set of functions that get called by the environments and, and, how, and what are their signatures? And then what imports are available when I'm running? Um, in the bytecode alliance context, we've been working on this concept um, in WIT called a world. And a world's like a thing you target. When I'm, when I'm writing code, I'm targeting a world. And that says, these are the imports available to me. These are my exports and how I get called. So uh, a question is, over, you know, this, this, all this tooling is very new and, and just stabilizing right now -ish and over the course this year. But by the end of the year, we should have a nice stable preview to release that should give people a stable basis to build off of. But once that is, we have that stable basis, could we describe these different plugin contexts as different worlds? This is the scheduler world, scheduler plugin world. This is the admission controller world. This is the blah world. Each, you know, this is, I was, that was one thought that came to mind is, 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 is if there is a pattern here and we're seeing this enough times, it's worth investing in some shared infrastructure. Maybe there's some shared plug infrastructure using worlds and this. And then what you get from this is bind gen for all the languages. So I, I have, once I have bindings generation for wit, then, then I can bring any language and write a scheduler plugin, which make it really easy and cool for people to get involved. So yeah, anyways, that's, that's what struck me. Yeah, that sounds really uh, awesome. So uh, you can even compose words, right, to a Kubernetes world. And uh, so maybe the uh, componentize uh, event of the Bytecode Alliance in September is a good uh, hackathon startup uh, to uh, get into that. So if you haven't heard about it, we can repost it in the channel. Totally. All right, so we have uh, roughly 20 minutes left. Uh, let's take a discussion async. I think these are all really great topics to pursue. Um, next up, we do have a, an introduction into WASM time. Um, I believe, Michael, is that is it yours? That oh, yes. WASM edge. WASM edge. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we have WASM time people here. Uh, you know, oh, I'm so I sorry. I, I said WASM time <laughs> instead of WASM edge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you, you know because I I, I saw um, K Wasm on the agenda as well. So um, you know, um, so so am I really in the next? You know, um, uh, so should I talk? Yeah. Uh, so I, I the way the way that I was thinking about doing this is give ten minutes to you and then ten minutes to Till and uh, let's uh, because we only have about twenty minutes left in the meeting. Okay. I think uh, we could probably follow up on K Wasm in the next one if that's okay. I'm that also. So I'm I'm also happy to um it, let my thing be bumped to the next meeting if ten minutes are is too short, whichever works best. Thank you so much for your flexibility, Till. Sure. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So um well, um it's nice to see um, you know, um uh, old friends and new faces here. And uh, um so um, I shared my screen. Um, can, uh, I think everybody can see it, right? You know, so that's uh, so um, um, because we made a proposal to move Mazum Edge from a CNCF uh, sandbox project to an incubation project. So you know, we asked for permission for the um, for the work group to to come in and present to you guys. You know, that's uh, to intro and it's not really um, uh, introduction to Mazum Edge per se, but the update of Mazum Edge. Uh, since it has gone into the CNCF uh, sandbox. So, you know, um, so what I, I'm going to do is I, I'm going to walk through this document. I think, you know, it should be fairly quick, um, but there are some um, some new development that's, you know, um, that has since happened that wasn't in this document. So, you know, I, um, I um, you know, I would also cover them. And, uh, and so one, um, um, first of all, I, I think um, perhaps um, an important um, thing to note is uh, the positioning of Wasm Edge. So um, we have seen, um, as the previous speaker, I think has made an excellent point. There's a there's a large category of uh, use cases for WebAssembly, that is uh, to build plugin systems, especially for uh, Go based applications. Um, Wasm Edge actually, um, you know, um, started uh, with a different, uh, slightly different use case in mind. So we have always wanted to be the standalone runtime. You know, um, so um, from the get go, we want to be managed by, say, uh, Docker tools or Kubernetes tools and uh, to run side by side with Linux containers. So the idea is that Linux containers would run more fully fledged applications with, um, you know, with all the operating system access. And uh, a runtime like Wasm Edge would be able to run things are 
um, you know, um, narrowing scope, for instance, uh, serverless function, or as we will see, you know, a lot, a lot of works that we have done recently has been AI inference and you know things like that. So uh, smaller workloads, uh, much starter, startup, startup, uh, startup time, much smaller image sizes, um, and uh, but still coexist in the same. Um, um, in, in, in the same container ecosystem. So, um, you, you know, so there are a lot of use cases where people use Wasmage as a plugin system as well. But, um, you know, um, our uh, initial vision, you know, that's uh, um, has been, you know, uh, to use it more like a, a, a standalone runtime. So, um, we um, we entered the CNCF sandbox in April 2021. You know, it's uh, uh, in the middle of the pandemic, it's so hard to believe it's so, uh, you know, more than two years later. Um, two years has passed. And uh, so since we have joined the CNCF, um, there has been a tremendous um, development thanks to the organizational support CNCF has given us and also, um, you know, folks like yourself in the, in the work group. So we have um, close to 200 contributors who have contributed the code to our, um, you know, to our main repository. And uh, they come from 53 organizations. And uh, our... Um, you know, one of the things that we have not done super, you know, um, successfully is to grow the core maintainers um, group. We still only have four maintainers, and uh, most of them work for, um, you know, for the same organizations with company called Second State. But, um, you know, we have um, 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 vastly expanded the number of committers and reviewers. Uh, at, when we started, it was only four, and now we have 16. So we are looking, uh, we are getting a lot of interns, and we are, um, you know, we are growing those um, those young talents in our community, and uh, um, um, it, it is uh, our hope that within the next twelve months we would have you know at least a couple more um, uh, outside maintainers um, for this project, and uh, so and uh, um, yeah that's uh, the number of contributors has grown from six to close to two hundred, and uh, um, the get up stars I know it's it's a, it's a vanity matrix you know that's um, shouldn't be focused on that but it's uh, um, it's from under about a thousand to six thousand, you know, in the in the, in the, in the, um in the past two years. So in terms of the technical metrics, uh, we have made numerous releases, and uh, and you can see the release notes for each of those. And since then, since our made the incubation proposal a couple of months ago, we have entered a more um, I think more regular uh, releasing schedule. So you know, so we have released on point sixteen, and now we are on on our way to release point fourteen. And I'm going to talk about what has a um, you know. The important new features that are um, in those releases, but um, some of the notable features that we have done, I think, um, because um, you know we um, try to balance um, the need for uh, to support the latest and greatest um, 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 web assembly standard, including the uh, component model standard look. In this group has been you know has been um, you know spending a lot of time working on and uh, you know um, other folks at Byte Code Alliance as well. So we are committed to be um, you know um, um, to be at least the second round time you know maybe after Wasm time in terms of uh, support for for um, uh, for component model. We have built toolings around that, um, but on the other hand, you know we also have customers or I wouldn't say customer users who needs to use Wasm today and uh, they can't. Um, uh, they aren't necessarily at the latest or uh, or most forward-looking standard, so we have to deliver um, solutions for them. So, for instance, you know, we're going to talk about that. You know, a couple of companies using us for as a runtime for serverless functions, and uh, some of them use us for uh, AI inference on the edge, and you know, things like that. So, you know, um, so from our point of view, we need to balance those needs. So, um, so the the uh, bullet list that um, you know. On the screen, basically, uh, talks about some of the uh, compromise that we have made, right? You know, so, uh, so for instance, we have put a big emphasis in supporting dynamic languages, especially JavaScript. You know, so uh, we have uh, like uh, um, like every single other runtime, so we have uh, QuickJS compiled to Wasm and have it running there. However, we had a step forward with two uh, internships support supported by the CNCF to add Node.js API support into the QuickJS runtime and also add uh, TensorFlow and the PyTorch inference support into, um, into our JavaScript runtime so that people can write JavaScript applications that are conformed to, say, um, write a Node.js server and have it run on Wasm Edge, for instance. And all those are um, you know, are made possible by building Rust and C++-based uh, extensions that also compiled Wasm, um, you know, in addition to the QuickJS, and also those are all open source that in our community, right? And we work closely with VMware to, um, we currently have a CNCF internship 
going on, joint intervention going on with VMware to have a uh, to have a student working on uh, expanding the Python runtime. The the VMware Wasm lab has contributed to to the Wasm community to support uh, the PyTorch API so that um, it can go through the uh, underlying Wasi and um, you know um, bridge to um, you know to to take. Um, you know, uh, AI inference tasks and have them run on the, on the, on the underlying PyTorch runtime through Wasm. Um, you know, that's, uh, so those are the things that's, you know, we feel are very, um, you know, are super excited. And uh, of course, uh, the second bullet point talk about container and uh, Kubernetes tooling. And uh, um, we are uh, now fully integrated into um, 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 a Docker desktop. So, you know, so you can start Wasm Edge runtime directly from Docker desktop. And uh, um, we have done several demos and I have, you know, uh, the community seems to like it, you know, because um, we would do a database application, a Postgres application, for instance, and if you use it, use a Linux container, even with a very small runtime, you, you are looking at, you know, 50 megabytes or even 100 megabytes of image size. And uh, with Wasm Edge and Rust, you would, uh, the, the total image size is under one megabytes. It's only, I think, 800 kilobytes, right? You know, so uh, you had a full-blown database application that you can, you know, that's, uh, um, that's that can act as a microservice or service function, right? So, you know, that's, um, and in that ecosystem, we also work closely with uh, Red Hat team and OpenShift. So we um, um, uh, we have contributed uh, uh, extension to the C run. So it's now in, in, a, uh, in real Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Fedora upstream as well. You know, so uh, to enable um, a Wasm capabilities in Cira. So th that's, um, with that, you know, that's um, in the whole open shift ecosystem, you can use Podman and other, and other tooling to directly control a Wasm runtimes like Wasm Edge, right? You know, and uh, then, um, you know, we have been enhancing the, um, the, um, the Wasi standard, you know, the Wasi standard, um, it's uh, moving on its own pace, but um, a lot of our customers need, <laughs> you know, uh, things like asynchronous networking, you know, because um, one of the primary use cases for Wasm is to have, um, you know, an increase the computational density, meaning that you um, on a single CPU, you may have, instead of two or three containers, um, you would have a hundred Wasm runtimes, and most of them are waiting for some kind of IO to return. So in that scenario, the, the, the CPU is mostly idle. That's why you can cram so many Wasm um, runtimes run on top, uh, into one CPU, but uh, it's critical that none of them gonna break, uh, gonna block the main execution thread on the CPU, right? So you know, so those are the features that's um, um, you know that's um, we would have to move. Um, um, I think ahead of the 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 the, the standard work in the bytecode alliance because I know um, all Wasi socket is being finalized as we speak. You know, in the in the um, in the, um, in the standard body as well. So those are the things. Um, you know, that's, that's, we, um, that's, um, you know, we put a lot of efforts to, and uh, we try to differentiate uh, our runtime with, um, uh, from, you know, uh, many other excellent runtimes like Wasm Time and Was Zero and Whammer and, you know, um, um, in the market, right? You know, so we um, try to fill um, a particular niche that is, um, you know, that is being the cloud native foundation that we want to be a runtime for, for cloud native applications, right? So, um, the incubation stage requirements doesn't really requires uh, end users, but it's uh, ask for um, partners and users, right? So um, the most entities I, I, I listed here are uh, what I would consider end users. So uh, for instance, uh, Docker, um, you know, I, I know that Docker folks here, uh, I would consider Docker end user, but you know, uh, some people may not, but some people may think it's a, it's a, it's a technology provider because people use Docker to, um, to enable other applications, right? You know, so, um, um, the integration with Docker is something that's, you know, we are very proud of, you know, that's, uh, um, um, Docker has become, you know, one of our, um, you know, uh, um, um, a big partner um, for us, right? And then, um, you know, um, um, but within the company, I think, um, the, the um, you know uh, the the true end user organizations are companies like uh, Huawei Cloud and Byte uh, and ByteDance. You know those are uh, big internet companies that use um, Wasimage internally to power their uh, inter internal serverless functions and also to power uh, at various um, um, uh, levels of the networking stack. You know so um, I know ByteDance has uh, um, is using Wasm to. Uh, do things like um, you know um, uh, at the HTTP proxy at the at the gateway level and also at the 
um, you know, at the agent that collecting logs. And, you know, there's lots of places where they use WASM. They sometimes use us, they sometimes use um, other WASM runtimes. But, you know, um, my understanding and my, you know, my, my conversation with them, and even through some of their uh, paid contracts that uh, that I understand, you know, WASM, uh, WASM Edge is being used in production in those organizations. And then there's um, uh, two, um, other, two other projects like uh, XRPL Labs is a, is a, is a um, um, I, I think the best way to categorize is a crypto payment system that is built on top of the Ripple blockchain. It's a company based in Germany, and uh, they uh, because um, you know the there's legal and other issues surrounding the the blockchain space. So what they have done is they have built a smart engine run, um, you know execution runtime in their wallet. You know, so they're in their crypto wallet, right? You know, and they were using Wasm Edge for it. You know, that's um, you know, the primary reason is because they were building that in C plus plus, and it's easier to integrate um, with Wasm Edge. You know, that's uh, through their system. You know, and then there's a Singapore-based um, uh, high-frequency trading company called Byte Trade, and, uh, and they use Wasm Edge um, for um, you know for um, you know data flow functions type of services, right? You know, it's like um, you know, when you get um, trading signals from from different places, you put in into a um, you put into a messaging queue, and then you have something to process this data and consume that data. Um, typically, uh, in the past, you would have system like the Apache Flink, where you have a JVM that does this, right? But um, um, with Wasm, you now have a much lighter way to do that, right? You know, so you could you can you will be able to write those in Rust instead of in Java. So so um, they seem to like it, and and it's what uh, it's in their system as well. So and then there's a um, there's a, um, a product called Flows, uh, Flows Network, which is um, you know uh, I would say um, the best way I would categorize that it's a it's a it's a serverless function platform that uh, uh, connects different uh, SaaS. So it's a workflow serverless function. So um, it's a uh, it has just started and it has um, I think the last time I checked, it has um, uh, over 500 registered developers and uh, a couple million. Um, you know, uh, serverless function invocation per month. You know, so it's uh, uh, in, in the land of you know edge serverless. It's uh, it's a very small player, but I think you know it's growing and it's using us in production. So that's why we like them. <laughs> you know, so it's uh, um, yeah, that's uh, um, you you know that's um. So the proposal goes on to say, you know, there's um, um, um you know the 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 contribution activity and the 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 um, you know contribute, uh, you know, the releasing schedule and, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, so I think um, the most important thing uh, at the beginning of the proposal, and uh, um, the thing I didn't really say here is that, um, is what I said in the beginning of the talk, is that I I think we are uh, we are very committed to uh, to support all the standard that's, um, that's, uh, that's the standard organization has come out, you know, um, including, um, you know, with, with the help with many people in this group, right? You know, so um, we are very committed to, to support the component model. In fact, um, one of the big uh, things that we'd have done in uh, WASM 012 is to, um, is to separate the runtime into the core runtime and the plugins. The plugins are components. So the, um, the, the plugins can be described by wet files and then generate um, a binding, um, you know, um, through the core um, runtime. Although there's, um, uh, you know, there's uh, a details of the specification that hasn't been finalized yet, but this is definitely something that we are already practicing. And, you know, in the next release, we're going to have a lot of, um, uh, quite a few AI related components, so to speak, you know, so for instance, we're going to have an open CV component, have all the open CV functions exposed into the WASM runtime through the plugin system in, uh, yeah, as defined as a, as a bit file, right? You know, and we are gonna have a FFM pick and you know, all those um, you know, um, um, you know, um, um, um processing libraries that's currently available in Python, we would uh, uh, we would move them to to Rust and Wasm and uh and you know that's uh, and help this ecosystem grow to be more um to handle um, more of the um you know um uh, AI and machine learning based um based workflow which we see that's um, that has very high demand for um you know um for Wasm. So yeah, that's, uh, um, so I think I'm over my time, you know, so, so I'll stop here and uh, to see if there's questions, you know, I have supplement materials if you are interested, you know, that's, uh, you know, so um, yeah. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, you, your team has uh, done some wonderful work here and uh, it's really great to see all the progress. Um, well done.
uh, open the floor to questions. Uh, we have about five minutes left on the clock. Uh, who, who has questions about wild match? Ashtash, first question, I, or first hand I saw go up. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I don't have really a question, but mostly I'm interested in can this, is this a, this wasn't as is incubated or it's like going to be into incubation and the PR is there? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's in the sandbox. And so this <clears throat> PR is to enter the incubation, you know, so, so, you know, that's, so it's, uh, it's under Got consideration. It. So, yes. Can you can you please link that PR somewhere like in the doc and something? So yeah. Um, let me. Uh, yeah. Let's. Um, I'll put that in the doc in a, in a, in the notes for sure. You know after um, you know after we're done here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds interesting. It's it's great. I'll, I'll. I just want to go through it. So, but thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So I get. One more user from this this conference. It's great. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so seven, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, not really. Yeah, it's a question. So uh, you have mentioned a lot of uh, yeah connections and where you are working with. Um, but uh, what I've not seen here is uh, other products that are using Wasm Edge, like for example, Quasar. Oh, you're right. So Quasar is one of the um, 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 Huawei's Huawei Cloud's projects. So Huawei Cloud uses it in multiple places, you know, so they use it in Quasar, you know. Um, but, you know, um, I think CNCF mostly looking for end user adoption because Quasar seems like another open source project that embed Wasm Edge. You know, there are, there are indeed a lot of those, but, you know, um, like KWASM, you know, that we cl work closely with you guys as well, right? You know, but um, people, um, they tend not to consider those end users. They tend to consider those, <laughs> you know, um, uh, tool providers, right? You know, so yeah, that's uh, that's why you know I made a uh, emphasis on on people who's using it at the at the end user level. Yeah. So. Yeah. Got it. Anyone else have any questions? So uh, from a naive observer, uh, I'll, I'll ask a question. Uh, there seems like there's lots of runtimes. It's really tough mm -hmm. to decide which runtimes are the right ones to use or what the case is. Um, is there, is anybody thought of any opportunities to describe and differentiate? Like I, I, this is a really great uh, description of what Wasm Edge does, but I imagine as people are approaching WebAssembly and they're approaching like, how do I build things? What am I building and what should I use? Um, it, it would be really helpful to you to kind of give, I don't know, a roadmap or, you know, some kind of like, hey, decisions, how do I do this? Right. So I think, you know, um, um, I believe the, um, for WasmCon, you know, we are working on a, a ecosystem map like the you know, uh, the cloud native ecosystem map. However, um, I think to say, to choose which, to guide, to choose which was runtime, I think it's a contentious process because there's a, uh, there definitely overlap between us and, and was time for sure, you know, and was zero as well. Although was zero, I think it's one of the ones that are, um, that has some quite standout features. For instance, um, it's uh, it's super easy to integrate with Go, you know, because it doesn't need to require C Go, you know, because we are written in C++, you know, what, uh, Wasm time is written in Rust, so integrating into Go, you have to have C Go. And uh, uh, was was zero is just uh, a library uh, dependency. You include in your Go application, and you are you are ready to go, right? And uh, however, the drawback the drawback, of course, is that um, you know they don't have some of the heavy performance optimizations that we do, like AOT. You know, so it's uh, it's mostly an interpreter based solution. So you know, so you would have, and also. Um, it um, when it gets to things like um, asynchronous networking and you know things like that, it could be a problem. However, in the plugin system, you may need all, you may not need all those, right? You know, so it's uh, so I think that is differentiated. Um, and then WMR, it's uh, it's a very small runtime, and it's uh, it's um, I think uh, Bytecode Alliance called it the Wasm Micro runtime, right? You know, so it's more of a, a running on the devices, um, you know. Um, 
I, you know, they are not here. They may disagree with what I said, but at least that's my understanding, right? You know, that's uh, so. Um, for us and what, uh, you know, um, I, I let look talk about what's in time. But for us, that's we really want to be the, the standalone runtime. You know, the one that's uh, around side by side with Linux container, not inside Linux container, not inside something else. You know, that's yeah. Thank you so much for providing that perspective. Um, I, I believe we are now a minute over. Um, I am so sorry to, to Till and uh, Kay Wasm. Uh, we will, uh, if, if possible, please uh, uh, join us for the next meeting. Uh, we will have that in a fortnight. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for uh, coming today. Um, a heads up, uh, WasmCon is not too far away. It's September 6th through uh, 8th in Seattle, uh, Bellevue, I believe. Um, anybody has any interest in it, please come join us. We'd love to see you all in person. And uh, yeah, thank you all again for today. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, discussion. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thanks David. David. Cheers, y'all. Uh, we'll post the recording Cheers. as soon as possible.